And we can only hear Charlotte. Right. And Charlotte, you can actually mute myself. Yeah, go ahead and mute. I don't know that we're going to have any background noise, but just for now. Okay. So thanks all. Everybody's saying they could see in here. So thank you. So what we're going to do is we're just going to roll through this. There's a, um, a few times I might pop somebody in as unmute so that we can um, hear from you. But I apologize. I didn't know that there was a difference to webinar. I didn't know what the difference in Zoom was of webinar versus meeting, but we are obviously learning that. Obviously. <laughs> so a couple weeks ago, um, and I'm looking down the list. Let me just see. I think most of you were here. Um, a couple of you might not have been here. If you weren't here a couple weeks ago when we did the two-minute commercials, you're going to want to go back and re-listen to that um, so you know how to create your commercial and start understanding how to put the pieces of that together. And also then you want to send that to your um, senior business partners, mentors, what have you, so that we can, um, <laughs> Charlotte, you're funny, Charlotte Israel. Um, we're gonna make you show your screen just because of that. <laughs> um, because I know I look so much better than anybody else right now. I mean, like, come on, I washed my hair, does that count for something? <laughs> um, but anyway, we're going to work tonight. Um, we were moving from two minute commercials to going into power statements. And a lot of people were asking, what is a power statement? And so we wanna really get down to that because your power statement is what Elizabeth Weber refers to as your 13 to 33 second commercial. Now, I want you to understand your 13 to 33 second commercial is different for having a conversation with someone versus being in front of the room at like a UBP or a local. So a lot of you who are executive coordinators at a meeting, you would be asked to come to the front of the room and you might be asked to share something. In that case, you need your 13 to 33 second commercial. Name, where you're from, um, what you do or did, and what got your attention in the business and why you're excited about it. Um, that's it, it's very 13 to 33 seconds. You should be practicing that so that no one is stealing the front of the room. Um, it should be a very quick, succinct thing so that, and here's the idea, just so that you know, is that when you have a guest or anyone has a guest at those meetings, you want the new people, the guests, to be able to hear from a variety of people, a variety of backgrounds, and it doesn't need to be a long story. It's just a short little 13 to 33 seconds. So like as an executive coordinator, you'd be more on the 13 second side. As they start moving into, depending on what pin levels are in the room, anywhere from professional on up, the person running the meeting will judge how much time that person gets. So if there's a lot of directors in the room, Pip and I as nationals are not going to get 33 seconds. So we have, to, we have to whittle it down while we're standing there thinking. If we are like the last of the crew and there are no directors in the room, then we need to expand upon our story a little bit because... We are the closers of that meeting. So hopefully that makes sense and you want to really work on that. Um, and we're trying to work on that across the entire company as a field to be able to get better so that every time people go to a UBP or a local seminar, it is powerful. Um, because when people get up there and they just go on and on or they say the wrong things, and I'll give an example of the wrong things. Um, hi, I'm Beth Black. I, so let's put it this way. I'm an executive coordinator. So I'm one of the first ones to go. Hi, I'm Beth Black. I've been with the company 24 years. And I, I, was, a, um, I was an occupational therapist and I'm, I'm so excited. I love this business, just love this business. You've got to get more information. That is not, but we've seen that. We've seen a lot of that. And that's why we wanna help you guys. So. Get your 13 to 33 second commercial down and send it to somebody who can help you. And that could be us. It might be one of your other senior business partners. You might want to send it to a couple of people to put eyeballs on it. But you want to make sure that that's down and really, really good. Just a reminder at UBPs, we're not lining up by levels. Oh, remind them of that. It, when we're going up to the front of the room, it's not by level anymore. It used to be based on left to right. Um, 
the highest pin levels to the right, but that what they're doing is they're just selecting people randomly at the UBP to speak. So you may not get selected and don't be offended. Um, they're trying to just get a flavor. And it, how many people they pick will be based on how much time they have and how many people are there. Okay, we're allowed to give you <coughs> a whole face. You don't have to be a half a face. <laughs> um, so, um, so moving on. So when we talk about power statements for your business, remember your entire time, your job is when I'm talking to somebody that's um, I'm prospecting or not even prospecting, it's a possibility at this point. I'm just having a conversation with somebody. My job is to create a power statement out of my two minute commercial that's going to entertain that person's curiosity. I'm trying to raise that person's curiosity up so that this guy is gonna look at me and say, well, what do you do? Or tell me more about that, or what is it? And these are things that we've had people say to us. Like, sometimes people don't say, what do you do? And sometimes they don't say, what is it? They just say, well, tell me more about that. I don't, or they'll look at you with a quizzical look and say, well, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Like they're asking for more information to continue the conversation on. And so you want to create a power statement out of your two minute commercial that's going to create that curiosity so that you can um, be able to raise that up and move forward. So I just want to say this, I, you know, we're, we're still at the beginning of the year, aren't we? <laughs> Even though January is almost over, which is crazy. Man, it's flying. <laughs> um, but here's the thing. It is a new year still. And you have to know where you're going in order to create the commercial. If you don't have your goals and where you're going, it's going to be really hard to have a commercial. And your commercial is about you, but people don't want to hear about you. That's not, they want to talk about themselves. And your job is to get them to talk about themselves, not talk about you. Um, so when we talk about that, um, you know, it's, it's hard because I think we've all, our worlds have all been rocked by the freak accident that happened yesterday with Kobe Bryant and all of the other people on board. And I just want to say this, we have got to have a goal because I mean, if you go back and listen to any of his speeches, any of his statements, it's all about just stay focused on what you want, get, get negativity out of your life, move forward, because we don't know when the last day is. And I think all of us in some way, shape or form have been rocked by this freak accident that happened. And it's a good time for us to go, you know, we're not promised tomorrow, but the thing is, if we don't set goals, where are we headed? Where are we going? Um, so I just want to say we have to have that because in the end, you want to elicit that there's products, elicit that there's a business. But don't lead with it. Exactly. Exactly. Don't lead with the products. Don't lead with the business. Imply that they're there so that someone understands they're there and they'll ask questions if they want to know. Because we talked about this in previous calls last year. And that is you're trying to find out what they're looking for to provide a solution. If you try to provide a solution up front and you don't know what they're looking for, or you assume they're looking, if I assume that Pip is interested in nutrition and I assume that, then I'm going to lead with product. And I should never assume that. I have to ask him questions to find out mm -hmm. what you are interested in. Yeah. And we've done, we've made so many mistakes making assumptions and leading with the wrong thing because we made assumptions. That's why we're kind of covering this because we've done it. We've done it a lot. Yeah. Um, a lot of the things we hear from you guys is I need more practice. I, I just, I have to practice more. I didn't get enough practice this week. Um, I want to say this, what's holding you back? What's holding you back? Because something is holding you back from taking that action to be able to practice. Right. Now last, I guess it was two years ago when we were getting ready to do our local seminar in Charlotte, we wanted to have a completely different seminar than the ones we've done before. And we were going through our material and we decided to come up with a treasure map theme in that if, 
if you kind of follow the treasure map and do X, Y, and Z, you can't fail because um, that's kind of the process. But as we were planning this, we, Beth and I kind of talked about the fact that we could do the map, we could, we could do the seminar, we could have the best training ever, but the only thing that matters is getting the people who are in the room to actually take action. And that we can't control that as speakers. We can't control that as, um, as you know, mentors or whatever. Um, but that's the goal is the taking of the action. You, you can read a book all day long, but if you don't take the action that's in the book, you know, it's, it's like I say, um, a lot of people say information is power, but I say information is potential. Taking action is actually the power. Information without action is only entertainment. So part of our responsibility in this call is to get you to take more action. And I think JR says it best. Sometimes you just go out and muck it up <laughs> and, cl and clean it up. But if you're always waiting for the perfect time, the perfect time will never arise. No. It's like having kids. If you wait until everything's lined up before you have kids, you'll never have kids. You just, no. it's just end up having an accident and have, <laughs> having kids. It kind of happens. Um, so with that being said, you know, JR's constantly on our calls, constantly saying, just go make a mess. Just go make a mess. We'll clean up the mess later. And mm -hmm. I just want to remind all of us because some of us, in, Including, and I'm, you know, it's that I'm pointing at you and I've got three fingers pointing back at me. We're, we try not to be messy. We try to be so perfectionistic and have everything perfect. And I've learned to, over time, chill over some of that and create a mess and allow others to create a mess and work with it. And if we think of it like in terms of our kids, if you take a child as they're starting to grow and develop, and when I work as an occupational therapist with children, the, like our encouragement was let them make the biggest mess possible in the um, noodle box. Let them make the biggest mess possible in the water um, tank area. Let them make the biggest mess possible out on the park because we wanted them to get lots of stimulation in terms of touch and feel and smell and activity interaction with other kids and how things moved and flowed and mm -hmm. sand versus mud versus a leaf versus water. That was my job was to be the extension of their physical body so they could experience life as a, like another child would who had a full active body. And so I go back to that as an occupational therapist and say, we've got to allow all of us to mess things up a little bit, but that means go out, take action. It, you don't know what the outcome's going to be, but that's where it's coming back and having the free game and the post game report with the person mm -hmm. you're working with and doing the three way calls together to be able to discuss what activity happened in that. Um, and keeping in mind, what are our three result producing activities? I'm going to stop here and let you think, because I don't want to just blurt them out. We have three result producing activities in this business. And that means we have three actions that would produce results to move your business forward. So what are they? Type them into the box. I wanna see, yeah, I just realized you guys can type. You've all told me you could hear me. <laughs> so what are our free result producing activities in the business that we want to do? You didn't think there'd be a quiz, did you? See what we're getting here. Did that go down? I think it's. I guess that's a scroll down. I guess it will scroll as they come in. Okay, that's very close. There we go. Close. <laughs> I love that. And something else. No, you can't see the other answers. We can. I'll get to them in a minute. Okay, Charlotte, Charlotte Arder, you've got two out of the three as well as a couple of others did, but we're missing the we third go. one. Ah, Charlotte is real. Can you unmute yourself, please?
I might have to do it. Charlotte Israel, you should be unmuted. Can you hear me? Yeah. I can. Can you? Hey! Hey! Good job. Can you share with everyone what the three result producing activities are? Okay, the three result producing activities are number one, you need to show the plan. Okay, number two, sell products. And number three, sell tickets to the trainings that we have. Thank and that's you. your conferences, your locals, even UBPs and product training. Sell tickets to training. Get people to training. And why do we sell tickets to trainings? Because that's a good way to leverage, okay? Uh, leverage uh, your trainers, okay? Leverage, all right, uh, um, your, I don't want to say upline, but your senior business partners and your, the people that you are bringing to the meetings get to hear this business from the aspect of someone else's mm -hmm. perspective and not just yours. They get to hear another voice. That's and right. sometimes that's very important. No doubt that Charlotte Israel got all three components because she was the certified trainer of the year. Um, so thank you so much for that. I appreciate your insight. So, all right. Awesome. So yes. Yeah, so again, three result producing activities, you guys. We are sharing the products or selling the products. We're sharing the business, which is showing the plan. And we are selling tickets, which is education. Mm -hmm. So you all had little components of all of it, but it's all three of those things. So anything else we do, as Steve Harris calls it, is Guga. <laughs> if we are you know, trying to recreate things or we're trying to put things together for an appointment that we're going on, those are all things that are supportive activities. If we're reading our power line, if we're looking at Facebook, mm -hmm. um, all of that is just supportive activity to possibly put beans in the jar, as JR says. And so it's supportive activity, but that does not count as your eight to 15 hours per week of result producing activities. So in NUAT, when we talk about eight to 15 hours per week on result producing activities, it is eight to 15 hours per week of meeting with people to share the product, share the business and sell tickets by getting people to the events with you, which is then leverage, like Charlotte talked about, because now when you have five butts in the seat at the event, and it, the event is six hours, you have five people times six hours is 30 mm -hmm. hours of education going on instead of you getting six hours by yourself. Mm -hmm. That is leverage. So what we wanna look at is, you know, as we move forward, that's not tonight's call, but when you look at your goals and your action plans, it's how many hours of activity would you like to get through the next event and the next event and the next event? So um, let's just talk about convention real quickly in terms of planning for the next convention because that's gonna come right. up. Yeah, um, I mentioned in the video that I did in the group about you know tickets are gonna be made available and there's gonna be a strong pitch to sell tickets. Just make sure you understand what your goals are. Um, don't overbuy tickets don't underbuy tickets, communicate with us or your senior business partner because maybe we can batch some tickets. Um, get with people who are not going, who are on your team and find out how many tickets they want. So you might have people who cannot go in a couple of weeks to Miami. Um, so call them and say, how many tickets do you want to Greensboro? And you know, maybe it's just one so that they can get re-engaged. But if you call three people and each one wants three, then you know that you're buying three tickets. Get the money from them uh, or credit card or check, whatever. Venmo. Venmo. <laughs> um, you know, so you don't get stuck because nobody likes that. And, you know, the whole, the whole point of it is if, if you just want to stay in the game, then maybe it's one ticket. But if your goals are to grow, then you're going to have to figure out to be congruent with your goals, am I growing by one? And maybe you need two tickets. Do I want one on each side, left and right? Then maybe you do need the three. But do you have a goal statement? Have you communicated that with your senior partner? And you know, the last thing we want is people to get stuck with tickets. And that's why we go through this. It's not for any other reason. We don't want everyone to get so excited while they're there that they go out and over buy tickets and 
then they're stuck with them as we get closer to the event. So we want to prevent that. Um, so getting tickets later is generally not a problem. So, you know, you can always sell your ticket right. to somebody and get them to the next event and then call us and we might have a ticket or, you know, we'll get you one. And I'm just going to say that we actually still have some tickets on the team. So if at the last minute here, we are still, we have like six appointments this week. Um, because as JR says, the best use of your time in the weeks leading up to the event yeah, is getting people there. Yeah. We are not looking at sponsoring anybody this week. We are looking at getting everyone plugged into the next event, which is World Conference. Um, and then from there, we're going to be moving into locals and regionals. So again, just I don't want to beat a dead horse. Yeah. But and, it, and keep in mind, it is a business trip. So you have to have objectives in mind as to why you're going there. If it's your first one, absorb it you know it's going to be a little bit on the loud side or exciting it'll be fun um but there's a purpose and the purpose if you're taking guests is to make sure you have follow-up scheduled because as soon as you get out of there you want to meet with them and you know we know that there's not a lot of time at the end of the night because the event's so long if you have to carve out time and leave early with your guests to, to make sure that they're going along then do it you got to do what you got to do so let's get back to this whole commercial thing because we want to really, really get good at these. So the, the next call after World Conference, we are actually going to be practicing your commercials. So we want to, we want to get your commercials from you. This week, um, we had a couple of people that got their commercials into us earlier last week and we started working on those and they put them to the test. So I'm going to talk about that in a minute because we're learning from the process. For those of you who just got your commercials to me today, I have not gotten a chance to look at them yet because I've had meetings, but I will look at them and get back to you. Um, but Pip and I were looking at it and saying, you know, are you approaching people the way you were approached? And how were you approached? So think about how were you approached with the business and are, how are you approaching people? And if people were to approach you the way you're approaching someone right now, how would you react to that? It's a good question because it's a reflection. It's a reflection. It's a look in the mirror. Look at the girl or the guy in the mirror and say, you know, we're all worth it, but we have to know what are we, how are we coming across to people? And um, we don't have time to go through color testing and, um, you know, looking at all, at all the color code. However, if anyone's done any of that, and we're going to have some of that coming up here. Um, at some of the upcoming trainings that are going on. Um, and we will touch on it as well, because Pip and I have been working with Color Code for a number of years. But, as well um, as other personality types. I mean, we've seen a bunch of them. Yeah, but you need to meet the energy of the person that's in front of you. So here's the thing. If I meet Pip, who is obviously a much different energy level than I am. Now, you guys all know him. So he, he brings a lot more energy to our group than he does to people he doesn't know because he's comfortable in the setting. But if I were to meet him in a setting where we don't know each other, he does not have the same energy that I have. His energy level is different. He is more of a white personality. I am more of a blue personality. And so with that being said, we have to be, I have to be cognizant that if I come to him with amount of energy that I carry, he's probably going to shut down a little bit if I'm trying to have a business conversation. Now, he might find I'm cute, so there he'll put, therefore he'll put up with it. Um, obviously, you did at one point in your life. Yeah. Um, don't, don't roll your eyes at me. Um, <laughs> one year. <laughs> uh, Charlotte, I'm going to bring you back on to share that. That's a very good point. <laughs> Um, we've done that. Um, so I would love for you to share that, but you need to meet their energy. So think of it this way. When you meet somebody and you're coming up and wanting to share your power statement, that's going to lead into your two minute commercial, which is your story. Again, that's going to fold something about some products in there, fold something about the business in there without telling them what the business is, without telling them what the product is so that it's going to raise their curiosity to want more information. If it, is potentially a solution for them in their brain. But I've got to be able to look at how am I going to get him in a conversation with me? 
So you have three things that happen in all relationships. And I want you to think of all the relationships you have had up to this point in time in your life. You are either breathing life into that relationship. So you are the giver. You are breathing life into it. And maybe you don't always get that in return. There's others where you are literally sucking energy out of the person because you are the taker in that relationship. That person is pouring into you and you might be taking. So if I take this to a professional level, it might be you going to the doctor and the doctor's pouring information into you and you're just receiving it and you're not necessarily giving anything back to that doctor. Um, it might be, you know, when people go to, this is why psychotherapists and mental health counselors get burnt out because they're taking all of that constantly and they don't necessarily get it back for themselves unless they know how to do that. It's the monkeys on the back. It's the monkeys on the back. They'll wear you out. You've talked about that. Yeah. Um, so those are two. One is you're breathing life into somebody. Two is you're sucking life out of somebody. And then three is that you're on this equal level playing field and you're giving as much as you're taking. And it's just this great exchange of ideas and um, information between you and you feed each other. We have friends like that. We have friends that we have kind of broken the relationship with over years because they literally suck the energy right out of us all the time. Um, so you wanna look at yourself and we always look at ourselves when we go into any kind of situation because it's easy to fall into that and say, I just keep on talking, 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 and I'm sucking the energy out of the person in front of me. And so you wanna get good at communicating and instead of being the sucker of the energy that you are breathing life into somebody and you breathe life into somebody by bringing them a solution. And so your job is to find out what that solution is. Um, and I'm just looking down to see if I've missed anything. Do you want to talk about that or should we wait for another call? I think we might want to wait for another okay. call and have that on there. Okay. We could go on forever with that. Okay. So um, I, I want to just read, Laura had, Laura's not feeling very good tonight, so I'm not going to make her um, talk because she'll probably cough all over us and we don't all want to be coughed on before we go to Miami. We want her to get well. Um, so I had Laura. Laura actually had some appointments this past week. And so I asked her, I said, you know, what did you learn from using your two minute commercial and your power statement? What have you learned from the process so far? Because we've been tweaking those commercials and really tweak and trying to identify what's going to get the best results. And I loved what she wrote to me today because she said, breaking down my story and tweaking the verbiage was a very crucial piece of the puzzle to be able to talk with others precisely and with carefully selected conversation points. Points that left the person I was talking with to ask me questions. So I ended up more in a conversation rather than me doing all the talking. Ding, ding, ding. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to say to someone I worked very closely with many years ago, used to always say, if you get in a conversation and you find that they're asking you questions and they've asked you too many questions and now you're doing all the talking, you need to think of a question in your head, stop talking and ask them a question to get yep. them talking. Yep. She then said, most importantly, um, it has to be practiced, practice, practice, practice. So it can just fluidly roll off your tongue. And if you are interrupted with questions, it's a good thing. You can continue smoothly and continue the conversation. So what she's learning in all of this is that it's all about this fluidity. And we were talking about fluidity earlier today and then her message yeah. came across. Yeah, we actually had the conversation that when you're speaking with someone, it's Obviously, it's good to have your two-minute commercial and, you know, your 13 to 33-second commercial and your scripts that every, you know, you kind of understand things. But you have to be fluid in your conversation and not be robotic and try and remember everything and get it out word for word. Um, and JR talked about that when we were on the boat training. He actually stood up and said, it's all a dance. Everything you're doing with someone when you're talking with them, it's a dance. Enjoy it. 
to make the moves and see where it goes and kind of enjoy the process. And it's not about, you know, I got to do this, I got to do that. It, it, it's a dance. And, you know, I don't dance as well. <laughs> it's kind of I'm still dance. trying to get him to take lessons on that. Yeah, Maybe like you guys can help me talk him into it. Um, so another one that happened this week is Pip and Maria actually did a um, three-way Zoom session with somebody. And I'm actually going to, Maria, I'm hitting allow you to talk. Can you talk so we can hear you? Can you hear me? We can, we can. So I know I'm kind of throwing this on you because I didn't get a chance. I kind of planned this in my brain and then said, Pip, you lead it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it over to Pip for him to lead with what happened so that you guys can talk everybody because I think there were so many teaching points within what happened from the very get-go. So if you can kind of yep. go back to how she created the conversation. Okay, Maria, um, initially there was a post on Facebook that got attention um, and he responded. What was your post? Um, it was 20, 20 things to do to be successful in 2020 or something to that effect. Okay, and then he responded, correct? Correct. And he, made, made a comment? Yeah, he responded that he had to work on this one, this one. I'm always trying to do this one. And he numbered them off. Um, to which I responded, yeah, they're all good. I need, to, I need to do all 20, but there are some I need to focus on more than others. Um, and it just started a conversation. And... Um, he asked how I was doing or what I was doing. And, you know, I said, well, I, I, I've worked for a company for many years and now I'm doing something, um, trying to set myself up for retirement with some residual income, okay. you know, a residual income stream. And he said, oh, that's a great idea. It's always good to have residual income. I'd like to hear more about it. Okay. So, Maria, was that on the comments or was that in a personal yeah. now message? No, he sent me a Facebook message, the whole thing. Okay, great. Yeah, none of it was on the comments. And how did we get from that point to the Zoom session? Um, I sent him a couple short, I sent him the three minute sizzle. I sent him the short 10 minute business overview. And I also sent him because he was a high school, another high school classmate. Right. Um, I sent him yours and Beth's power profile. Okay. Now the training point here is number one, the conversation was fluid and you, you didn't jump on him right away, but you matched what you sent him to who he was. So we're kind of going with the fluidity theme here. And because we all went to the same high school, which doesn't happen very often, so this isn't something you can train on, <laughs> but you kept it rele relevant by sending our power profile. Correct, and when he responded, it's certainly motivating to see the company, because he, he at one point has said, I see Market America on your profile, is that what this company is? And I said, yes. And that's when I sent him, you know, I asked his permission, can I send you a couple videos? And he said, yes. Right, and mission marketing. Them. Yeah, and I sent those. And after he watched them, he said to me, very interesting, I'd like to talk more. It's certainly motivating to see someone you went to school with being featured by the company. Okay. So, which is why I sent the power profile, because I thought it might, lend a little credibility right since he knew you but you you match the situation with a particular tool correct so maria just out of curiosity for everyone else on the call how many people would you say you've contacted over the last you know so many months and you were frustrated because you weren't getting anyone to bite to to be able to get now to where you have somebody that's in the funnel a lot <laughs> <laughs> Can you give an approximate number of what a lot might be? Um, in what period of time would you like to know? Say in the last quarter. Um, probably, I don't know, 40. 
Okay. So the point I'm, the reason I'm having you say that is because a lot of people walk away from a call like this and go, well, yeah, it worked for her. And I just want you to know a lot of times, because a lot of you have said to us, you know, oh, you guys, because you make money, you are able to sponsor people. People don't even know what kind of money we make. They have no clue. It never, it's never talked about unless they go to an event and then see us at an event, get introduced. Yeah, we don't um, use it. We don't use that because that's, to me, tacky. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, the point is, we, I mean, I literally reach out to probably 10 to 15 people every week to get to where we are right now. And I'm not saying I've done that consistently every week for 24 years, because I haven't. If I did, I probably would, we'd probably be at director level, <laughs> but we haven't. And so my point is that we have to reach out and do a lot of reach outs because the people are out there, but we also have to reach out and practice and get better at these conversations. Because if we don't, then what's happening, excuse me, we're approaching people and people are not listening because maybe we're coming on too strong with product or we're coming on too strong with telling them what to do or we're coming on, mm -hmm. we get excited and we're the lap dog or it could be a number of different things but we have to constantly be willing to keep tweaking it and maria i just you have worked and worked constantly work on your story and improve it and work on it and this last couple of weeks we've seen tremendous change in how you've approached your story and that posture that you've had with it and now look now you've had a result with it yeah and i mean once once we realized that you were going to have a conversation with them then we scheduled a three-way and i just want to kind of quickly move on that we had a pre-game so we didn't only have the post game, but we had a pre game. So we kind of, you and I knew what we were going to do and what our game plan was going to be. And basically the game plan was you're going to lead the call and I'll be there and we're kind of going to do it together, but it's going to be your call. And that's what we did. And we got the follow-up booked. We got samples going out on daily essentials so that he can try them and we can have the follow-up later this week. Yes, we have a follow-up scheduled for Friday of this week. Right. So that's a successful that's right. call because we had the follow-up. If And we shortened the distance. He wanted to have the follow-up like in late February. And, and I think Marie and I were both like, no, we got to do it next week because we're going to be in Miami. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's a success. When you book a follow-up, you've had a successful appointment. I talked about that on the last call. So Maria, in closing tonight, can, and I don't know if you remember, but in that Zoom session, can you share with everybody kind of how you talked about your story through your two minute commercial? Like, just take us through how it kind of came to be and how you actually shared it. I think he actually asked me how I got involved in the business. Um, if I remember correctly, I don't know, that was a week ago. I can't remember yesterday. <laughs> But yeah, I think he actually asked me how I got involved in the business and I told him, you know, I kind of gave a brief, I did the whittled down version yes. of my story mm -hmm. that, you know, my husband had passed away and I had struggled a lot trying to get my life back on track. And I came across a, you know, a post that a friend of mine had made about her health journey and trying to, as one of my goals to get out of the slump I was in. I don't think I used those words, but um, I decided I needed to, you know, it might be a good thing for me to do to start working about on my own health. And so I joined her in her journey and was later introduced to the business behind, behind it and um, kind of went from there. And again, I, I love this because you kind of did a little bit of the power statement to get the meeting book that through your conversations with him via texting or messaging or whatever you were using. Mm -hmm. And then when you got to the call, because I wasn't on the call, but I was, I was listening from the background. Um, and she did, he, she didn't. And that's what we keep saying to you guys. It's a conversation. She didn't just come out and blurt out her two minute commercial he actually asked her, how did you get involved in this? And so it allowed her, now she had permission marketing mm -hmm. again to share how she got involved. So again, 
you want to be very fluid and natural, but you're not going to get fluid and natural if you don't go out there and practice talking to people. So I want to put a one week challenge and I would love to move forward from this point for the rest of this year and put out a challenge every week. Um, and so this week's challenge, whether you are on tonight's call or you're listening to this on a recorded version, your challenge for this next week is to go out and just create at least five conversations with people, not about our business, not about our products, but with five strangers, create a conversation. It might just start with, wow, you have a beautiful smile. I use that, I don't use it to people who don't, <laughs> but if we're out to dinner or we're out somewhere and I have the opportunity, I will just tell somebody that. It might be just at church or at work or just reach out to somebody who you don't normally talk to. It doesn't have to be a total stranger, but somebody you don't talk to and create a conversation and see if you can evolve that conversation to be more than just hi or the weather, but to really like have a conversation and see if in your mind you can see that there could be a way for you to do your power statement even if you don't do it. I don't care if you do your power statement. I'm not even asking you to do your power statement. I just want you to go out and talk to five people this week, create five conversations, have a conversation, and post in BV411 about it so that we can all help one another to be able to figure out where you know what was healthy about that conversation what could have how could we use that conversation in a next go around with somebody to be able to move forward with a power statement but again it's not about coming out with the power statement this week it's not about talking business it is literally about getting out there and getting comfortable just having conversations meet people meet people mm -hmm. believe it or not pip's really good at that he creates conversations and then makes me take them over <laughs> so if you want to work it together as teams, that's okay too. He's the one that actually makes the first comment to Usually. a lot of people. And then he just knows that I'm going to like take over the conversation and roll with it. And he doesn't normally roll with it. He just steps back. But it works for us. It works. So I'm going to open it up. If anyone has any questions or comments, let me go ahead and stop the recording.